Welcome back to COVID-19 360. Quick one, so happy birthday to my co-presenter, Anita Ekuyakufu. Today is her birthday. Anita, how old are you today? 30? 27. 20, 27, okay. Uh, so yes, it's her 27th birthday. Send a lovely message to her. And Charlie, allow cash out, it's important. But God bless you so much. Anyway, so going straight to my students. Uh, we have students from Ashesi University, from the University of Ghana, and also from Gimpa. Now for other students from other tertiary institutions, you can also join us via social media. We're talking about the directive by the president to have uh, final year students go back to school starting from the 15th of uh, June. And so I have Amtu Akunfi Ameya. He's in, uh, well, he is a level 300 student, but it's good he's here from University of Ghana. Florence Adipa Asante is also a level 300 student from Gimpa. Then we have Joshua Nitaki SL. Um, he's a USA coordinating secretary. And we have David Quay Brown, and he is a level 400 student at the University of Ghana. David Hughes. Davaro, hello. Uh, he's a uh, level 400 student from the University of Ghana. And Peter Kofi Kilson Akins, also a level 400 student from the University of Ghana. So you're all welcome and thank you so much for joining me. I know that since, you know, schools were shut and you had to rely on e-learning, a lot of you complained bitterly about, um, you know, the, the difficulties you were facing, first with internet connectivity and also with the time constraints, especially for those who had started writing exams online. And so I'm assuming that this is a good directive from the president to have you go back to school in your final year just to complete, right? Uh, who starts with me? I'll, I'll start with any of you. So you can talk, sweetheart. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, it's a good a good initiative, yes, first of all. But um, I must say that most of the students are not prepared now. Okay. You know, we had some challenges from the beginning with um, online connectivity, getting data and all of that. It was a major challenge to us. And now that we are getting... Um, used to the whole thing, the whole system, how it works. We have been asked to go back to school. Going back to school is right because markets are open, yeah. businesses are open and all of that. But I think that the the time frame of which you've been given to go back to school is very limited. Talking okay. about finances, most parents um, have been laid off their job at this time and then they are supposed to prepare their kids in less than two weeks to go back to school. Okay. And I think that the financial constraints there is what I'm stressing on. All but right. Going back to school is good and the reopening of school is good. So but you talked about financial constraints and that's Florence Adipa. And also there was another thing you mentioned about the time frame. Uh, let me come to um, Joshua. Joshua Nitaki, uh, you tell me what you think. And we have a hand sanitizer. So before you pass or you touch the microphone being passed on, kindly just use it so that we can continue to sanitize um, our hands. But what do you think about it? Because she's touching on financial constraints for parents and also for, um, you know, uh, the fact that the time is too short. You are done, but you are the coordinating secretary for USAG. And so tell me what you think, especially about what she said and what your thoughts are on going back to school for the level 400 students. Yeah, so thank you very much. But then uh, touching on what she said, yes, those are some of the little pockets of uh, explanations or reasons why you feel even if the we come into school on 15th is prudent. Uh -huh. These are some of the things that are the little challenges. I mean, there are a lot of challenges that can happen. For example, I, I am a student of University of Ghana, okay. Computer University of Ghana. So, for example, I know that if we are supposed to come to school, possibly, that means that there will be a need for us to reschedule a uh, timetable and all those things. And you those think things so? are also hectic. When you but say then, reschedule, had you started writing exams already? There's al already a schedule for exams online. There's a timetable out already. When were you supposed to start? So then they were supposed to start, I think, 8th. On the 8th, 8th of June. June? Yes. That should have been this next week, Monday? Yes. Oh, but I think you wrote academic something, writing, or one of the other... That's interim assessment. Oh, that was just interim assessment. Okay, carry on, carry yes. on. Yes, so those are some of the little bits of challenges, pockets of challenges. But then on the national, I feel the decision for uh, finals years to come to school is wrong because, one, I feel like the, the, f the best thing is that without life itself, there's no need for education because 
what is education if you're not going to be in the right frame of mind to have the education itself? Okay. Um, so, yeah, you're saying. You, let yeah, me let so you first of all, I think that my, my main concern is that life should be put ahead of any other thing. Because mm. if you don't have life, what's the essence of the education itself? Yeah, but at the same time, well, the same ones complaining about students staying at home for too long, uh, missing out on, you know, lectures, especially for those who weren't getting access to internet connectivity, because it, was, it seemed unfair. Some of you were benefiting, some of you were not benefiting. And so do you not think that just because other students weren't getting the chance to catch up, it was necessary to go back to school? So from the USAC perspective, uh, USAC have been having a lot of conversations and engagement with government on this particular issue. And then uh, the last engagement we had with the government, including uh, the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Communication, there was a plan for us to have a one platform, I mean, improved one, so that to support every single university, even the private ones, to make sure that the e-learning gets to every student. We got to find out that the main concern, or the, the basic underlying uh, challenge for all these universities was the internet access mm -hmm. and then for example you'd have students in ug who will, who will probably find themselves in let's say ot region complain that i don't have vodafone hence i can't partake in it because ug is using vodafone network yeah. so what the government decided to do was to find a way to enroll all the other networks into it so that that, that basic challenge would not exist anymore so okay. if you would remember usag had already sent a petition to ncte with mm -hmm. proposals and one of the first things that the government did was to make sure that uh, academic uh, sites were free on all networks, regardless. Yeah. Was a zero charge. And those are some of the things that USAG was working on. So we feel that... So you hadn't started benefiting from it. Was it free? Was it wasn't it really free, free then. Yeah, it's, 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 it's now working now. So now most of the educational sites are zero charges okay. across the networks. Those are some mm. of the things that after USAG sent its proposal to government through NCT and Ministry mm. of Education we reached that particular consensus. So we are we we're still on that particular trend to make sure that we have a very modified platform, online platform that all students can enjoy. Okay. So we feel that the call for final year students to come to school is wrong because it puts every single person in danger. Hmm. Okay. Even the non-teaching uh, staffs and even the teaching staff because you never know where, who is coming from. And let's say just a scenario. Uh -huh. One person level, 400 guests, is suspected to have uh, a COVID-19 case. That means that that particular student and that whole class are supposed to be put in isolation or quarantined. Mm. Put, bear in mind that these people in these classes might also be in different halls of residence. Yeah. That means that every person that each of them has come into contact with would also Could have also. to mm. go through that two weeks. So in the nutshell, you, end, you, you get to say that if only one level 400 student gets it, it's going, to be a like, it's going to be very likely that the whole school would have to still come to a halt for two weeks for all of those things to be done before the school continues. And that yeah. means that, I mean, it will, be, it will be null and void because the reason for you coming to school is for you to have that education and also write the exams. So if we are going to have these kind of instances, then it's better we just enjoy the online service because, I mean, comparing these two scenarios, the online it will be far it. better than, than having okay. there. Let, let me speak to David Hughes Devereaux because you are a level 400 student from the University of Ghana. And I recall um, your institution posting online that they were providing free um, data for students. So I think you had to log on. And I, I did hear some Ashesi students saying that they gained access to the free data. So they were able to study online. What about you? And if that's the case, then do you still think that there was a need to go back to school because your school was providing other avenues for you to still catch up with your studies. David. All right, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm actually a UG student. Uh, oh, UG, okay. Student. Sorry, yes, I got a in, in UG, yeah. Okay, all right. So um, I think... Oh, if you're a UG student, then there's no need to ask you that particular one. Okay. I got the information here that you are a oh. Um But then if your USAC secretary is saying that, um, you know, it's wrong for students to go, we do understand that there have been conversations about students getting tested before they get into school. And there are plans to ensure that you stay safe whilst on campus because the minister mentioned that the Ministry of Health and GS will be working with um, other institutions, uh, you know, to sensitize the leaders and stuff on how you can stay safe. So at least that helps, does it not? I think it does. I believe it does. And what the, the brief from the president and from 
the minister moments ago, I, I think it's nothing new. I mean, you expected if, it? Uh, some way, somehow, I expected it. I mean, um, countries all over the world are opening up, businesses are opening up. Europe, I understand, has even opened its borders to other European countries and all that. It is in the right direction that uh, some uh, minority students, such as the sciences, uh, would come back and then probably complete their practical research pro projects and all. I'm a victim of that. Okay, could you not have done that whilst home? Not at all. Because Why do you say so? What is it about I, your course that makes it difficult? To I, I, I culture bacteria in the lab and I need to nourish it every now and then. And okay. uh, whilst we were away, uh, that could not be done. At all? At all. Wow. Exactly. And so um, I believe that if the universities are ready and are willing to open, um, it is not government policy that, that will save us. The onus lies on us as students to also um, educate ourselves and be particular. I mean, um, we are university students, but you still have university uh, students shaking hands even now. Mm -hmm. They hug, they kiss, and all that. You see, so it's, it's, it lies uh, on us. Government may put, uh, rule oh, out the best something. policies yeah. to help with public health and all of that. But if we, as students, do not abide by those, I mean, we'll end up all dying. And so I believe that uh, it, is, it is a step in the right direction. Okay. L let me come to Joshua Nitaki SL. Joshua, you are the one. Oh, Joshua, I spoke to you already. Sorry. I meant David Quay. Okay. So David is also a level 400 um, UG student. Now, Florence was saying that some of the students were getting used to e learning. And so now, having to shift back to going to school and all of that, she's not too sure about it. What do you think? Were you getting used to it? Yeah. Thank you very much. I think that I subscribe to that particular. Um, argument that she put forth in in relation to us getting used to the e-learning in 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 regards to academic work final year students as as we have it now from the social science where i am we've done almost 90 percent of academic work we've done 90 percent of the tests okay so the how, new how do you know you've done 90 percent per your schedule per the you've schedule completed yes we've we've done over three interim assessment okay which per the new directive from the university was going to cumulate to about 70 percent of the mark mm -hmm. so we are just left with 30 percent of the mark to to to, to and where to would you have gotten that from from your exams from no? the final exams okay now we believe that having done 70 percent of the work already and having to pack all the way back to campus and going for another six week in six weeks Week intensive lecture, yeah lecture mm -hmm. just for a 30 marks i believe that we've 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 done enough in at, at home and we've gotten used to it even though there are certain challenges that we continue to encounter we believe that already we can have our final exams on the system okay not as a real-time exams but take-home assignments because per the university directive we had an option where the lecturers were to give take-home assignment. So instead of having real-time exams where you are timed and then due to network difficulties, you mm -hmm. are unable to complete it because the system shuts down a lot of times. People are unable to complete their test yeah. every single time. And so we were advocating for the take-home assignment where you give an essay-like question and then the student will have that period, a particular period, two, three days a week to mm -hmm. be able to complete it and then they submit it. But you, you don't make the decision. So how do you tell we, your lecturers what kind of assignment to give you well, and we, all of that? Well, we, we don't make the decisions, but we believe that at this point, this is where we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. We, I believe that students are not the creators of this pandemic. And okay. so at the end of the day, despite the fact that we want to make sure that the lecturers are also able to mark or get on with the academic yeah, side nice. the students also do not suffer at the end mm -hmm. so if you were in school we would definitely have been writing essay like questions during exams yeah but the only difference is this time you are doing it at home okay, okay. but at the same time i mean as much as you're talking about um completing about 70 percent of the assessment what about those students who did not get the chance to log on constantly so they can catch up with lectures as well? This is a fair opportunity for them to also come to school, do the six weeks uh, intensive so that they can also write the exam. Just in case they didn't score good marks um, for the 70% assessment, they can take advantage of the 30% and probably score higher there. Is yeah. that not a fair deal? Now, 
again, the directive that the university gave out, it, it stated categorically that those who cannot, who would not be able to have access to the online system can mm -hmm. have an external period where they will report to school and then go for some weeks and then they write exams. This was a directive this given was, to all was, students? Yes, it was part of, no, in the University of Ghana, I mean. That's what I mean. So students at the University of yes, Ghana? Yes, at the University of Ghana. There was an option okay. for those who cannot enroll on the online platform mm -hmm. to return back to school for a period. When, and when was this directive given? It was part of the entire directive that was given okay. after the whole pandemic, um, it, you know, erupted. Okay. So, it was part of the directive. So that this was even to, before you started complaining about internet yes, connectivity this, challenges this, and this all that. This came after the complaint had got okay. into a high, a higher uh, a stake. Ex so okay. there was heightened Tension, distress yeah. from students that they couldn't do this uh, system because of the internet challenges that we face. And so the university proposed that, okay, if you can't do it online, then we have another modality for you that you will report back to school and then you'll be able to take this a uh, few weeks and then you can write the exam. So I believe that this is already existing. And so it will be better off to have those students who genuinely can't have access to the platform mm -hmm. to report back to school if they feel that, well, this is the challenge that I'm facing so that you can write it in school. So students should be given the option to choose whether they want to come back to school for the six weeks. Yes, intensive. because I, I, okay. I, I believe that we've, 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 as I said, we've done 70% and some of us are already used to it. We don't have any, we've not really encountered any challenge with it. Some of us, because God, by God's grace, where we are, our networks are okay. Yeah, but that's just some of you, you know. So that's what I'm saying. So it should be optional. Okay. So that those who can't, Education has always been a decision of, you know, th though the fact that it's supposed to be for everybody, usually the one who has money always gets it. But a are you not, and let me ask Am to this, because mm. I, I, maybe you side with him or not, but are you not the same people who come back and complain later that they gave preferential treatment to some students and left some out if they give you the opportunity to decide whether you want to come back for the six weeks intensive before you write your exams or not? Okay. I, 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 Okay. Okay. I think. Okay. You want to touch on it? Okay. Yeah, just briefly, so that I'm too confused. Since it well. is in the directive, I believe that those who wanted to do that would have done it at the end of the day. So I believe that we shouldn't all be forced to get back to school to to go for this whole six weeks, especially as some of us feel like we've done enough and okay. we are just left with a few that we can actually do it at home. And there's really no point going back to school to okay. go and do that thirty percent. Um. So what do you think about this as well? Um. Okay. Thank you. So I. I, should I say I'm on both sides because, like David was saying, some people haven't encountered a major challenge, but that doesn't also mean that the very few who have encountered that challenge shouldn't be attended to. So like you're saying, we, we don't want to come back having people saying that people were treated better than others and then some people weren't considered and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I believe that... Um, the avenue that was given okay that's for my school that yeah if you cannot partake in it you have to submit more like a form reports to the school that you cannot partake in the activity then you you will be given like a time outside when is when is better mm -hmm. a time outside where you can go back to school and take part in the activity so that way we know that we are catering for everybody so the people who think they are okay, they are not facing network challenges and anything of the sort. They can uh -huh. still be home and do it. And then we can have the other people who are not getting access to internet and things like that okay. go back to school and take part. But then like David rightly said, whether you like it or not, if it comes that everybody has to go, you, know, you have to know it's up to you to decide that you want to be safe. So then okay. you are going to take the precautionary measures and things like that. All right, Peter hasn't spoken, so I'd want Peter to speak. Now, out of all the challenges that they say they um, have encountered and also some of the discrepancies with the directive by the president, what are some of your fears? Um, this is in relation to having to move back to school, looking at the number of final year students from all the departments. Do you have any fears at all? Well, generally, I can sincerely say there should be no fears. Now, all of us have spoken and geared our conversation towards the University of Ghana. Mm -hmm. There are a number of universities in this country, as well as technical universities, which didn't have the 
necessary infrastructure to embark on this online system. Mm -hmm. And so for such universities or institutions, it is in the right place for them to go back to school to complete the process. Now, for us in the University of Ghana and some other institutions like Hachese, we have peculiar instances where the academic schedule or calendar has almost been completed. And so allowing such students to go back to school and restarting or continue the semester for six good weeks mm -hmm. and taking exams for another week is, 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 is something that is going to be stressful. Okay, you're speaking and, and, for and, students and, from Ashesi. No, University of Ghana and Ashesi. Okay. And I specifically agree with what David, Quay, uh, David Hughes made mention of. I mean, there are certain practical courses that you cannot take them online. Like, like, like so his the sciences, course, yeah. some of the applied sciences, and all. And so it makes so much of sense to ask such students to come to school under special circumstances okay. to come and complete such courses. So not necessarily everyone. Not necessarily everyone. So okay. for me, I believe that um, particularly, I mean, I finished my entire semester, uh, what do you call it, lecture schedule about two weeks ago. And so it is just level the exams. We have taken most of our assignment and, 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 and IAs online. And so for us to go back to school for six good weeks, I don't think it's very convenient for students. However... Mm -hmm. It is a general government policy to all other educational institutions, which I think would have to be dependent on these institutions to make decisions which best fits into their model. Okay. And so UG can decide to say that, okay, per the government instruction or directive, this is how our system can fit into it. Mm -hmm. Takwade Polytechnic or Takwade Technical University can decide otherwise. Mm. As I think that we should leave that to the autonomous structures of the university to decide on which system they think would best work for them. Okay, should they have consulted the students' unions as well? Um, because, of course, you also are key stakeholders in the education industry anyway, and so they should have listened to your opinion, and maybe this way they would have um, you know, considered some of these issues that you've raised. Do you think so? Yeah, generally, I think NOOCs have been um, fairly and extensively consulted on such issues. Okay. Yeah, and NOOCs have given their opinion about it. However... Were they, uh, you know, included in the stakeholder meeting yeah, exactly. before I, the I, president's I, I, directive? I, I think it's so clear. Uh, I think weeks ago, they visited the president yeah. at the Flaster House. USAC have engaged uh, ministries and other stakeholders extensively on the reopening of school. And mm. if you look at, I mean... Uh, the global space, UK opened their schools, I think, um, yesterday, 1st yeah. of June. Mm -hmm. Germany and a lot of countries are enrolling and easing their restrictions, not even in schools, but then in the, I mean, various economic facets and other uh, realms of national life. And so, it's, I mean, th there has been that level of consultation. It has been done extensively. It has been done fairly. Yeah. But then you see, NUGS would speak on, on general basis. You understand? NUGS cannot... Um, sherry pick institutions and talk about what they need and what must be addressed. Yeah. And so this let's just like I said, for the various universities to use their autonomous structures to know how they can work out this government directive. And so for me, I don't think that it will be so fair for University of Ghana to take up a six week course and allow all final year students to get back to school. Especially when the school made um, a suggestion mm -hmm. to students that cannot enroll on this online period that you have three weeks after everything, to come to school to do an intensive, what do you call it, teaching and learning exercise. For some special students, For not some everyone. special students. Yeah. So just like David Kuehl was saying, this is nothing new for the University of Ghana. Mm. And then what of the other universities who do not have such infrastructure in place to, to, to realize their academic, what do you call it, goals? Okay. Yes. So mm. that, that is the worry. And I, I, I don't think it's a wrong... Um, a call by government to ask schools to go back. I, I sincerely don't think it's a wrong call. Life must move on. Yeah. We cannot use a COVID excuse and say that because one person is going to be infected, we should close down schools. We might be losing a lot. A mm. student, all of us know that when the mind is down, I mean, you, 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 you are not able to um, really, uh, what do you call it, consume yes. what you have studied. Over time, when the home environment is not so convenient and flexible for the teaching and learning exercise, it is good to put students back to the academic space where they okay. can do their teaching and learning proper. However, this should be very specific to the various universities. Well, in all this conversation, I don't hear you people talking about your health and how this could 
pose as a threat. But hold on, um, I'll give you that opportunity to touch on that aspect as well. Uh, but let's just move on and read some messages. And if you are from another institution and you also want to share your thoughts, you can find us via uh, WhatsApp. Our numbers are on your screen and also via social media at TV3 Ghana. So I'll read a few of those messages and then we can take a break and come back and complete the conversation. And so, quick one. So this one says, I want to say a happy birthday to my beloved son, Ibrahim Sumaila. Okay, he's one year old. Thank you very much. This is from his mom and dad. Now, good morning. Please help me find out from the education minister whether remedial classes that are training students for the private BECE WASI 2020 can also resume. Thank you. I may have missed out on this particular briefing. That's if he touched on it, because I believe there was a question about it. But I'll get you that information later. So far, uh, so far, they didn't say anything about we the private candidates for WASI 2020. Okay. Good morning to you, Bella. Please, I want to know if remedial students who are to write in of deck this year are also part of those who will be resuming. I'm Martin from Kaswa. Please, we are not ready to go to school. They should let us go somewhere in September. You didn't tell us because the directive is for only final year students. I'm not getting an indication of what level you are. So if you can let us know. This is Boston and he says, I think we're not ready for school. Okay. I'm Nanajua, a final year SHS student. We, the final year students going to school, are not well, we think the final year students going to school will not help. It's rather going to increase the spread of coronavirus. We can't afford losing more lives and contracting the deadly disease. Both the day students and boarders are at risk. Okay. Um, please, can there be social distancing between students' exercise books and the teachers? Okay. Good morning. Should be told, UCC is going to stress us when we go. And it's so sad. It's so sad. Um, I'm quick to slay. Please, the school is not like uh, we don't. Well, the school, it's not like we don't want to go. Okay, because of the case, my mom said I should not go. But what do you do if you miss out on your final assessment? I'm guard boy from academy. I don't think it would be good for us to go to school because they think we're matured. But we behave different when we're with friends in school. Dining, Saturday vibes, etc. <clears throat> I don't think we can put on nose masks for hours. Hmm. Good morning, I'm Enoch from Darkuman. From my view, I think government made a rush in opening schools. And now I'm not even ready to go back uh, during this era of COVID-19. Well, we will manage. Hello, Bella. I'm Francis, a final year student in a private tertiary institution going to write GBC and ABC. I want to know how long it will take for us to be in school before writing our final year exams. Well, from every indication, it looks as if schools will be allowed to do um, six weeks intensive course before the final exams. I can't say same for you in particular, but I'm sure you'll get the updates eventually. Good morning. Please, I think JHS 3-2 should resume on 15 so that we can have enough time to learn and interact with our teachers. My name is Etonam Akpa. Well, he says that if all your arrangements are in place as an institution, you can start reopening from the 15th. Hi, good morning. Um, the nursing and midwifery students are known to complete school in September. Are they supposed to spend six weeks on campus before they complete Dell from Takrade. Hmm, interesting question. I, I don't have an answer to that. We'll see if we can get a rep from the education ministry to answer some of these questions. Good morning, Bella. I'm Atia Maxwell from Garu. I need some clarification on final year students of College of Education. The Ministry of Education is not clear on whether final year diploma or degree students will reopen on the 15th. Well, I don't know about College of Education because he said all institutions that are not under the Ministry of Education can reopen. Um, however, institutions under Ministry of Education, I'm not sure, can reopen. And so you have to find out from your institution if there's any plan for that. Good morning. There should be mass testing for final year students returning to school to ensure that at the very least, there wouldn't be an importation of the virus to campus. That way, if there will be monitoring in the interim, it will be on an assured foundation of initial safety. And that's Solomon Omani Mensa University of Ghana. Okay. Hello, Bella. The minister did not mention what will happen to junior high school final students who were in the boarding house. My brother wants to know from Efia Kumasi. I think he did talk about boarding houses operating for JHS and for SHS as well. Um, please, can you confirm... Uh, to me concerning the final year distance students, whether they are part of reopening, especially UCC, College of Distance Education. This is Joe from Elembele. Interesting questions, I must say. And like I, I said, we'll try and get the authorities to answer some of these questions. At the moment, we're speaking to students to find out what their thoughts are on the reopening of schools for final year students. And so we'll come back and talk more about the health and what they think about that as well. Keep watching this COVID-19 360. 
getting heated in the studios and I'm here with students from some tertiary institutions uh, telling us what they think about the president's directive to have final year students um, go back to school. And so I'll go back to Florence and, you know, quickly, let's touch on the issue of data because the University of Ghana students were saying that, uh, you know, it, there was some form of free internet connectivity for them so they can study online. Was it the same with Gimpa? No, please. Okay. We were not provided with any free um, internet data. Um, we as GIMPA students buy our own data, and that is one major um, challenge for mm -hmm. now. And then um, they were talking about um, they having options to choose from. Let's say you can come back in three weeks' time to have an extensive class and before you write your exam. Mm -hmm. But we don't have all of that. But because of our limited number, for example, my class, for instance, we are just 16. So what our lecturers do is that um, they, they come to our level. They, they, um, they, have, they are not being so strict on mm -hmm. um, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. They come to our level, they communicate with us all the time. Mm -hmm. Will WhatsApp be okay for you? Will Zoom be okay for you? Which medium will be best for you? That is um, one thing I should applaud my department for, for okay. the patients our lecturers have for us mm. in terms of that. But those free data and code that other tertiary institutions are you enjoying, didn't benefit we from do. It not have that all right joshua back to you because you were talking about the issue of discrimination i need you to explain that i wasn't getting you clearly okay so then first of all i'd like to uh, make it clear that this is not a stand of USAC. this is this is a this is your stand. personal stand. yes because uh, i know that at, at the moment i'm the user called the secretary is it for so everything you said so far on the show I, for just i mean for that's why when i was making the initial uh submissions i use the pronoun we to okay. get to know that that's the stand of the union okay on that particular directive but then this is a, a personal uh, Go stance ahead. On, on this particular thing. So then I'm arguing from another point of discrimination in the sense that I believe that there's nothing like a final year exit exams on emphasis on the word exit for mm -hmm. any degree. Because at the long run, your degree is an accumulation of your exams right from level 100 to 400. So I mean that I, I know that my fellow <laughs> level and I to make argument of the grade weight of their uh, I mean levels. I mean, if I level 100 and 200, the grade rate is one. If I in 200 and 400, it's mm. two. But then you should all bear in mind that the degree is just an accumulation of whatever exam you're going to write. So the level 300 second semester exams is as equally important to him or her as the same thing with the level 400, who is also coming to write the level uh, second semester exams. Hence, if you are giving special or preferential treatment to level 400s, who mm -hmm. in this case fall into the bracket of final year students, but then do not fall into the bracket of exit exams. I mean, that means it's discrimination because I'm in level 300. I'm also going to write a level, uh, the second semester exams. Yeah. But you're, sub you're subjecting me to an online exams. Uh -huh. Rather giving professional treatment to a level 400, whose le final year exams, I mean, final semester exams for. But at this semester, point, they are critical. The Their case is thing. critical. It's, it's not critical because. One, if, if, your, if your GPA is, let's say, for example, 2.5, uh -huh. if you even get 4.0 in your second semester exam, you'll still be hovering around lower. And that would do nothing to your degree. Well, a it miracle could, could happen. So, a miracle can happen. A, a miracle can happen. That same miracle can also happen to level 300, who probably is also in 1.2. But at this point... And then if he's also allowed to come to school and then write the exams because it's an accumulation of his GPA... Mm -hmm. Probably would put well, him to us in a very good stand. The Somebody president to said that this is a progressive facing, uh, you know, uh, easing of restrictions. And so as much as possible, I think that it's fair that we're allowing final year students to complete so that now we can focus on them, on the others. But anyway, yeah, let me ask the others the before my time is up because final I have year to run. Exit exams. Okay. No so worries, we totally understand. Exit. But let me ask the, the guys at the back. Uh, basically, so in terms of discipline, do you think that university students can be that disciplined? Um, you know, so they're saying social distancing, you probably would have to avoid going to your friend's room and all of that. How is it going to affect, um, you know, group studies and all of that? <laughs> well, Bella, interesting. I think uh, the university stage is a stage where people are more conscious and far um, aware of what they have to do and what they do not have to do. Mm. And so for that instance, it will be, dependent on the student to make decisions, right decisions for themselves. 
I mean, this is a very scary pestilence that at the end of the day, your own ways and your own deeds and doings will determine the risk of your health. And so I don't think with that one, someone would have to be cautioned with sticks and canes. Okay. To be straightened on what to do right or wrong. But mm. then I think, let, let me touch on health. before. So touch on we, that briefly so I can yes. wrap up, please. Okay, so on the health, you know, with the various um, JHS and SHS, for instance, I, for once, my school, GSTS, had a very, excuse me to say, rickety old-fashioned sick bay mm. until recently uh, when it was renovated to an ultra-modern one. Mm -hmm. now, how many secondary schools in Ghana have a well-capacitated or, I mean, fixed health centers to be able to tackle such issues? Well, the minister says Do that they they're, have the necessary they're working in to collaboration with, with um, I mean, some health institutions. So, 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 you know, a lot of sick bays in the various secondary schools are not in the right state. Well, but the minister says that they are pegging each school to a health um, you know, center. So in case there's an emergency. But no, anyway, but, but, unfortunately... But, 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 you know, first of all, you, I totally you understand. have to deal with... You my my to time deal is up. My, my no, director is Bella, no, you have to so deal with such health emergency. We'll see if we can do this <laughs> again. <laughs> but thank you all so much. I'm to a Confia Mayao, uh, Florence Adepa Asante, Joshua Nitaki, David Quay, David Hughes Devereaux, and Peter Kofi Kilson Akins. Thank you all so much for joining us on it. We couldn't exhaust it all, but we hope to continue hopefully later. So this has been COVID-19 360. Thank you for watching and we'll be back tomorrow, same time.